But in Adams County, PA, an ongoing love triangle would turn into a murder investigation when on May 12th, 2016, Fred Allen Ramos, who was 48 years old at the time, would be found outside of his workplace in his car severely injured. His fellow employees would call 911 and they would come, but he would die soon after and it would be found out that it may have been the man who was also seeing his girlfriend. Hi everybody and welcome back to Killer Concepts, the place where we talk about all things true crime. My name's Peyton and today we are talking about the murder of a man named Fred Allen Ramos, who was killed in 2016 in Adams County, PA. And I actually heard this story on the radio and it was right before I was diagnosed with COVID and I was excited to cover it. I was like, it's an update because they finally had arrested somebody for his 2016 murder. And so I was going to cover it right away, but then I got COVID and then I was gone for a couple weeks. But now I am back and I'm ready to share this story with you. Before we get started, if you have not done so already, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications so that you do not miss a thing. I post both funny crime videos and true crime videos here on my channel, as well as possibly some vlogs in the future and some summer adventures that I am planning on going on. So just make sure that you subscribe and become a part of my little true crime family here on YouTube. One thing I would like to mention before we get started with this story is that most of this story is all put together by witness testimony that were around at the time of the incident. Um, this man has been arrested for the murder of Fred Allen Ramos, but he has not yet been convicted. And so just remember that everybody is innocent until proven guilty and until he is convicted of the murder, I just want you to keep an open mind because some things may come up in his trial. So at first I would just like to start by going over the main people in this case. It is not a super intricate case, but it is a very interesting one. And so I just want to break down the three main people that were part of this love triangle. So in this love triangle, we had Fred Allen Ramos, who was the one who was killed May 12th, 2016. He was 48 years old at the time. He had died from a blunt force trauma to his head. And we also have a man named Carl Scott LeBrant. And LeBrant was a 41 year old man who had worked with Ramos and he actually was the supervisor at the company they worked at. Alongside these two, we had a 23 year old female. I could not find her name, but she was actually in intimate relationships with both of these men. Now, all three of these people worked at a place called O'Malley Lumber that was in Tyrone Township. And like I said, LeBrant was the supervisor there at the time, and he actually was up until this year when he was arrested for the murder of Ramos. So as I have already said, what I have gathered from the multiple sources that I went through, and on this story in particular, I did try and stick to sources that were from my local area versus some of the more national outlets who have covered the story, just because they're a little bit more close to home and I'd love to give them support as well as the fact that uh, they were right there in the situation. All three of these people were in a love triangle and from what I have gathered what happened was that 41 year old LeBrant was in a serious relationship with the 23 year old female that both of the men had worked with. Now she had actually lived with LeBrant at the time and she did up until the date that he was arrested in 2021. This woman would also have a sexual relationship with Fred Allen Ramos, who is 48 years old. And it has been speculated that the reason for their relationship is that she would sleep with him, 
and then he would give her drugs like Percocet to feed her addiction. LeBrant did know about the sexual relationship between this female co-worker and Ramos and he made it abundantly clear several times that he was not okay with what was going on and that it needed to stop. And LeBrant's anger over the situation would slowly start to boil over and he would begin threatening Ramos and this is something that both of their girlfriend knew about. That's the only way I know how to describe her because I do not have a name so stick with me there. And several of LeBrant's co-workers actually said that he was pretty prone to violent outbursts and he was getting very irritable and the situation just wasn't working out well. These texts from LeBrant to Ramos were discussed with the woman who was in a relationship with LeBrant at the time and a sexual relationship with Ramos. Um, there was multiple text conversations going back and forth where they were talking about it. The woman had said several times that this has got to stop that they were all adults and it was just, it was basically getting ridiculous and it needed to stop. It was actually believed that on the day of Fred Ramos' murder on May 12th, 2016, that he had actually gotten a call from LeBrant that morning, which he threatened him physical harm if he were to continue speaking to the 23 year old woman. This also was discussed with the woman and even with this on her mind and her knowing how prone to outbursts LeBrant can be, she pretty much just ignored it all. And so when she was having car trouble on May 12th, she had actually texted Ramos and she had asked him if he could come pick her up from work that night. Now, I do wanna mention LeBrant was working at O'Malley Lumber that day as well and she still texted Ramos when she knows that the two of them weren't getting along and he agreed to come and to help her. Investigators had tracked Ramos's movements that day and they said that he did multiple things. He bought cigarettes and gas, he visited family. He seemed 100% okay until that night when he arrived at O'Malley Lumber. When around the time that he would have arrived there, Apparently, right before, other co-workers of theirs had said that LeBrant was acting strangely. He was pacing back and forth. He just, he wasn't his normal self. And he was actually on a forklift at the time and he had lumber on the forklift. And so he drove off outside of the building, which they assumed that he was going to dump the material somewhere. And then apparently 15 minutes later, according to the witnesses, he would come back without the forklift and he was panicked. And he told one of his other co-workers there that he knocked out Ramos and to go check on him. So that fellow co-worker did what LeBrant said and he went and checked on Ramos and he found him in his car and he believed that he was dead at the time. He did not think he was alive. He he thought LeBrant killed him. Now this co-worker who had went and checked on Ramos because LeBrant asked him, when he had come back in the room, apparently the 23 year old woman who was in a relationship with LeBrant and Ramos was also in the room as well. And when he had said that he needed to call 911 because Ramos was not responsive, apparently he heard her telling LeBrant that he killed him. And he apparently responded with, quote, I did it for you, babe, end quote. When the police got there, Fred Allen Ramos was actually still alive, but barely. And it wasn't very long after when he finally passed away. And the case kind of stalled from there. The police had an idea about who did it. LeBrant was their prime suspect but they had no real evidence against him. They had very, very little physical evidence and they had no witnesses. While there was so many people who had seen all the things that had been going on between the three of those people, nobody came forward and wanted to talk. And let me remind you, this happened in May, 2016. Fast forward to now, last month on April 26th, 2021, 
grand jury indicted Carl Scott LeBrand, who's 41, with the murder of Fred Allen Ramos. So apparently the grand jury indicted LeBrand with criminal homicide and aggravated assaults. And this information was originally released by the Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro and the Adams County District Attorney Brian Sinet. I hope I'm saying your name right, I'm sorry. Sinet or Sinet, not really sure. Now these charges came after a five year hiatus on the case since nobody wanted to come forward. And to that, Brian Sinet said, quote, quite simply, it is very possible that charges in this case may not have been filed if it weren't for the assistance and cooperation of the attorney general. It is great to see law enforcement agencies working in such a collaborative manner in the interests of justice and in an effort to hold those accountable who commit violent crimes such as this, end quote. Sinet then added, quote, Although charges have just been filed and there is much more work yet to be done, we certainly believe that we have the person responsible for killing Fred Ramos and he will face justice, end quote. So according to an affidavit, what had happened in order to get the grand jury to indict LeBrand of the murder of Fred Ramos was that they actually got a bunch of the witnesses who had seen LeBrand and Ramos and the 23 year old female right before the incident and then right after the incident and the behaviors that occurred. So they finally got them to come forward and all of those people would testify in front of the grand jury. On top of that, they then had a medical examiner named Dr. Barbara Bollinger to testify in front of them as well. And she testified to the fact that he had died of a fatal head injury. Bollinger would testify that he had been hit so hard that there was actually a cut behind his left earlobe, but on top of that, there was an abundant hemorrhage of the muscle on the side of his head, as well as forceful enough of a hit to damage his skull. Our skulls are severely tough and that takes quite the swing. Um, it definitely seems purposeful by the damage that he sustained and his brain was swollen with bleeds throughout it. As I had mentioned before about the love triangle between both the men and the 23 year old co-worker, police believe that that was the motive behind the killing and that is probably what they will go forth with at trial. I am very interested to keep an eye on this case and see what else they have to say or what the defense would possibly come out with for this. So LeBrand was arraigned Monday, April 26th, 2021, and he did try and get bail, but it was rejected due to it being a murder case. And his preliminary hearing was actually scheduled for this month, but on May 12th. I did try and find more information on that, but I could not find anything at the time. So when I do find something, I will make sure to do a update video or something along those lines so that I can share the results with you. Love and jealousy can make people do crazy things. And again, I want to remind you, he has not been convicted of the murder, innocent until proven guilty. But not only this case, but other cases that we have seen that have to do with a love triangle always amaze me that people go to these kind of lengths to keep somebody to themselves. Before we go, I do want to give you just a tiny bit of information about the man who was murdered, Fred uh, Allen Ramos. So he was actually from Adams County and I did look up his obituary because I did not want to just leave it at the fact that he had died from blunt force trauma to the head from being in a relationship with a female. I wanted to see a little bit about what his family said about him because we need to start looking at victims in a more 
bright lights. We need to discuss who they were as a person and not just what was done to them. And so I just wanted to say a couple things about what I read about him. So Fred, who was also called Freddy, Alan Ramos, um, he was a 48 year old man who was from Gardner's PA. As I said, he was killed Thursday, May 16th. 2016. Now he was born October 11th, 1967 in Gettysburg to um, his parents Juan and Hazel Spielman who are no longer alive. Fred was working at O'Malley Wood Products at the time of his murder and from what his family said about him, he was a very social and a very special person. He had a great sense of humor and he was a very hard worker. Um, and he absolutely loved spending time with his family and spending time outdoors. He left a tremendous amount of people behind him when he passed. Not only did he have a daughter, but he also had a brother and seven sisters along with multiple cousins and other family members and nieces and nephews and I just my heart goes out to his entire family for what has been done and I hope there is um, some uh, justice served to him. Now I don't know who he was in his adult life or if he had a record or a checkered past but that really doesn't matter because somebody doesn't deserve to die this way. So I just wanted to make a point to talk about who he was as a person before we end this video so that we know that he isn't just another murder victim, he was somebody's family member. As I said, I will keep you updated on this case as I learn more about it. I'm probably going to try and do more local cases to my area because there's a lot of really interesting cases around here that aren't always televised or they're not national news and some of them are just really fascinating and they're either really crazy like let me tell you we have a lot of crazy crimes just wait till i find them and i'll go over them <laughs> for my local area maybe we'll do a whole video on that but um as for true crime we have a heck of a lot of it around here it's just some of it's the norm like gang violence and then other is actual crazy murders and homicides and so i just i want to shed some light on some other people and some things going on so i hope you enjoyed today's video um i hope you understood it the, the love triangle thing for me on this one was a little hard to explain for the reason that i did not have the woman's name and so i hope you understood everything that went on in this story and if not i can try and re-record this and re-explain it to you um just let me know but um don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down below um turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any more of my videos and it notifies you when i post something also don't forget to go follow me on my killer concepts instagram and if you have any case suggestions or funny true crime stories send them to a killer concepts vlog at gmail.com now remember that the world's most dangerous minds hide in the most unlikely places stay safe <laughs>